When your child has been murdered, it's a nightmare. But when your child is accused of murder, that is also a nightmare. And that's the situation for the parents of Scott Peterson. He's on trial now in California for the murder of his wife, Lacey, and their unborn son. The Petersons have rarely done interviews and have not talked publicly at all since the trial began a month ago. But recently, they did speak to Barbara. The judge has imposed a gag order on speaking about details of the case. But the Petersons can certainly talk about the son they say is innocent. In this Redwood City courthouse, the trial of Scott Peterson for the savage murder of his wife, Lacey, and their unborn son, Connor, is expected to last as long as six months. For the families of the victims and the accused, the case has taken a heavy toll. Scott's father, Lee, who owns a small packaging business, and mother, Jackie, are convinced of their son's innocence. Hundreds of miles away from their San Diego home, they and others in the Peterson family have pledged to remain at Scott's side whatever the emotional and financial cost. As the case unfolds, the Petersons must reconcile two versions of their son. One as a wrongly accused husband who grieves for his murdered wife and unborn son, and the other an adulterer turned cold-blooded monster. Why don't you sit right there? We met with the Petersons a few miles from where the trial is taking place. They seemed exhausted and emotionally spent. Mrs. Peterson suffers from chronic bronchitis and is hoping for a lung transplant. Her condition, as you will hear, requires her to remain on oxygen. You have been at your son's trial every single day, yes? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's consumed us totally so that there's no joy in any of our lives since Lacey went missing. To a world transfixed by the Peterson case, the sordid facts have become all too familiar. The Petersons had been married for five years. On Christmas Eve of 2002, 27-year-old Lacey Peterson, eight months pregnant, mysteriously disappeared. Within weeks, suspicion turned to her husband, Scott, when a massage therapist named Amber Fry revealed that she was having an affair with him, a fact he did not initially tell police. Once the affair was exposed, Lacey's family, the Roaches, who had been supportive of him, began to distance themselves from their son-in-law. Four months later, the decomposed bodies of Lacey and the baby they planned to name Connor were found washed ashore in San Francisco Bay, downstream from where Scott says he was fishing the day Lacey vanished. A few days later, Scott was arrested and charged with two counts of murder. Describe your son for me. Describe Scott Peterson. Gosh, where should I start? He was a, he loved to hug and, and kiss and uh, very affectionate. Just, just a really kind, you know, sweet little guy. Was Scott ever violent? Did he have a temper? He had no temper, Barbara. He's got He's, my temperament. I don't get angry. I get hurt or sad. Was he ever in trouble? No. He never in trouble. Never in trouble of any kind. He was too good to believe, almost. <laughs> I swear, we never had to swat the kid or anything, ever. How did Scott feel about the fact that he was going to be a father? Very excited. Happy. He built a nursery? Yes. Uh -huh. Called us at 7 a.m. in the morning yeah. when she took the test. <laughs> and I said, how do you know? And she said, I took the test. They tried for three years to have a child. They did? Yes. When was the last time you physically saw Lacey? How many days before she was missing? Four days. And everything seemed fine? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. We were all putting our hand on the baby's stomach. Scott was trying to find it for us so we could feel it kick. And um, they, were, they were just ecstatic. When you first heard that Lacey was missing, what did you think? How did you hear, first of all? The phone rang, I answered it, and Scott was sobbing on the phone, and all I could hear was Lacey and Miss, and I thought she'd miscarried. And my heart just sunk. And then um, I said, settle down, take some deep breaths. Everything's gonna be okay. Take a few breaths and then tell me slowly. And he told me she was missing. You know, there have been reports that he showed no emotion. How are you doing personally? How are you holding that dog? Well, this is a, a lot. Strain, obviously, so. Yeah. 
people have said he was emotionless. No, it's not true. Oh, most people know that. He showed emotion, but he didn't cry 24 hours a day. He cried privately. He worked at trying to find her. He tried to keep us up, you know, by because we were breaking down too, so he'd try to be brave for us. What did you think when you learned that your son was the prime suspect? Couldn't believe it. We thought they were joking. Just disbelief. I mean, my God, here's, here's a, a missing woman, and, and uh, within days, you're focusing on my son, and, and, and you should be out looking for, for his wife and baby. Mr. Peterson, how do you know your son had absolutely nothing to do with this? It's just not in him. It is just not in him. I've never seen him mad. The only time I've seen him mad is if he misses a golf shot. He might get a little mad. That's, at himself. That's it, yeah, at himself, yeah. What kind of a marriage do you think that Scott and Lacey had? They had a very good marriage. They were, they backed each other up all the way. It was like it was them, and we were all outsiders. They were totally dedicated to each other. Did you have any idea that your son was seeing another woman? No. Amber, did you know that Scott was a married man? So when you heard that he was seeing another woman, what did you think? It was surprising. It was disappointing. But it's certainly not anything that's extraordinary. Well, if you thought the marriage was so good, were you not shocked? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah. were shocked. We were shocked. We and were disappointed. Unhappy. I mean, that's the reality of life. Men have affairs. Women have affairs. When their wives are eight and a half months pregnant? Probably more so. That's mostly when men do, we've learned. I had no idea. So is it your feeling, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but that um, Lacey was pregnant and Scott needed another woman for, I don't know, sex I, or what? What do you think? I think it's that simple, Barbara. I, I really do. There's no that happens. It, 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 it certainly doesn't give motive for, for murder. How is Scott doing? He's doing okay with the, with the trial because he's actively involved in it and he can see some light at the end of the tunnel. He works hard to keep himself up because there was a time he wanted to give up when he found that he had lost Lacey and yeah. the baby. There are times when you know, it's difficult to go on, obviously, because they, Before the much. trial? <laughs> Just in despair? Yes. Like his life was over and gone and um, everything he was building in his life was for Lacey and the baby. And you have to understand, he was virtually run out of town. Scott, any Scott, you got a second? Scott? Hey, Scott? He had media following him. Are you taking a polygraph test? Hounding him every day. He had shock jocks lined up in front of his house with bullhorns, you know, screaming murderer. And he couldn't son. live in his home because of all the media presence. He became a homeless man, living out of a car. He really did. He literally became a nomad. So in a strange way, being in this prison now in trial is, is almost a relief. That sounds strange, but um, at least we knew where he was every night and, and that he was safe, relatively safe. Does Scott talk about Lacey? Yes. He has tears in his eyes, but it's... We try to concentrate on the joy we had with her and, and the good memories. Does Scott ever talk about his son? Same thing. Mm -hmm. It's very hard. Give me some idea, if you can. Well, it's, we try to keep him up when we go there, but things come up, and then when we mention it, then he starts weeping, and we just try to move it up, you know, remember the good things, the nice times that we had together, and. We'll always have those. No one can take those away from us.